for joining us for the Superintendent's Art Gallery today, May 17th. We're very fortunate to have you all here. Um, I would like to recognize the attendance of everybody in here, the students, the parents, um, who we certainly could not do this without, all of the principals from all the schools, all the art teachers who have helped prepare your children for this event. We'd also like to thank our um, interim superintendent and our assistant superintendent, as well as our board member, Ms. Annette De, or Mrs., excuse me, Annette DiMaggio is here as well. So we're very happy that everyone is here to celebrate your children's successes. Your presence at this evening demonstrates your belief in the importance of art education. While we know some view art edu arts education as less important when compared to academic subjects such as language, math, and science, however, the value of arts education should not be underestimated. Arts education improves school performance. In fact, several recent studies have concluded that the creativity and innovation utilized in the artistic process will be highly valued by employers in the United States in the coming years as we continue to shift into a global economy. Nothing can develop student creativity and imagination better than arts education. One of the most important benefits of arts education for students is that it helps students appreciate and understand the different cultures and values of our very diverse society. Art becomes the shared link, the glue, that shapes our understanding of how we see ourselves and each other. Again, thank you for coming tonight together to celebrate your children's artistic successes and show support for their progress. And now I would like to turn it over to Mr. Paluski for some remarks. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening and welcome to such an outstanding event. Uh, first, I want to recognize uh, Mrs. Alley. She does a wonderful job. There's so much that she does behind the scenes that really makes this evening's event spectacular, uh, as well as the time that's actually spent to grab student artwork, get it here to the Board of Education, and put it on display. So I thank her for uh, her leadership. But tonight, it's about our students. And it's about recognizing their talents in the area of visual arts. Most recently, uh, we had recognized for the very first time, uh, we recognized our students in the performing arts uh, that we just had done last week. And really talking about the value of arts education and what arts education does for kids. Uh, there is no doubt in today's world that you have to have a value of art, but it's the what you learn by the process of art that is a natural skill that is essential for the world of work, uh, for the collaboration, for the connections that you make. And so I'm so very impressed every time I get an opportunity to go visit a classroom, but specifically I have a bias of spending some time, a little more time, in the arts. And I really appreciate our teachers that are here today because what they've done in helping your child develop this skill is going to show in the work that you're going to see tonight. And I think it's that value of arts education, the skill of teaching in the arts, that I really applaud our instructors to do that. And next is really to our parents, or our guardians, that you're here supporting your child. Because without your encouragement and constant promoting them to continue learning about their art form, expressing their art form, that is what makes us great human beings, is the fact that we all have an inner ability to create. And some of us look and say, I'm not really creative. Yes, you are. And it's that ability to be able to find your art form. So I'm very proud of our students today that we're gonna showcase, because we're gonna showcase their art form, what they're good at, and really what they're sharing with us about themselves. And I think that's so important and so I thank you, thank you for being here. I'm so excited about this opportunity and really look forward to applauding all of our students and what you're gonna see is some pretty amazing artwork. So I thank them, thank our teachers, I thank our administrators for being here as well to encourage those teachers in helping promote your child's education. So with that, I'll turn it over to, back to Mrs. Alley and thank you very much. Thank you, and again, 
the help that we get from everybody here at the board, um, my secretary, Kim Adams, who's not here tonight, she helped with all, lay out these beautiful programs. And of course, Mr. Strait and Ms. Harrison helped to make sure that it's safe for posterity. Please turn on to Channel 7 at some time and find out when your children are going to be seen. And Lucia Calloway, thank you so much for helping me pass out the, the things. OK, the first artist and uh, principal who are going to be presented are um, Chelsea Beatty from Bayside Elementary School. The teacher is Sydney Pedraza, but she was not able to be here tonight. So please come on down. Um, Mrs. Pedraza couldn't be here this evening, so she wrote up something special for Chelsea, and I'm going to read it. Good evening. I am so happy to share with you this tonight, the artwork of Chelsea Beatty. Chelsea is a very gifted artist, and I have had the pleasure of working with her in my art room for the past three years. No matter what the art style, technique, or media that we are learning about, or working with, Chelsea always has the most positive attitude in her approach and is eager to begin working creatively throughout any project and always striving to do her best. In this piece, you see <laughs> In this piece, you see hanging here, we learned about impressionist artist Claude Monet his series of paintings would show the even changing effect of light on color and how to work with the watercolor technique wet on wet. The wet on wet painting was Chelsea's favorite part of, uh, out of all parts of this project because she liked watching the way the color expanded, moved around the page, and mixed with one another on their own. Though Chelsea is a fantastic artist, her favorite subject in school is math. <laughs> Had I known I would have definitely had her working with tessellations to see what she would come up with. Chelsea, Chelsea also enjoys gymnastics, playing lacrosse, playing with her friends. She even shared with me something she and her friends like to do. Rather than jump rope on, the, uh, jump rope on her trampoline, they draw pictures on their sidewalk with, with sidewalk chalk where they're ready to make a new creation they just rinsed off with the hose and start over again. I'm definitely going to miss Chelsea next year and hope that she continues to take her art classes as she moves on to the middle school next year. And that was from Ms. Pedraza. And Chelsea, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Mom, thank you. Right, Chelsea. Okay, Mom. if we could have the Mom. superintendent, board member, and Our next school and student and art teacher who will be presenting are Kyra Dickey and Ms. Nancy Adams from Centerville Elementary School and Ms. Teresa Farnell, who I thought was at a lacrosse meeting. So, and I even looked at you. Kara Dickey is a kindergarten student at Centerville Elementary School. She is always ready to learn and eager to try new things in the art room. Kindergarten has been learning about architecture and architects. We first explored different styles in color and paint. Next, we were ready to work with architecture in collage. We first looked at kinds of shapes that would be needed. Geometric shapes will help create the houses in the neighborhood, so we explored best ways to cut out these shapes. Next, organic shapes were explored and then added for trees, bushes, and clouds. 
Our finishing touches, we're using different kinds of lines to add details to our architectural collage. Kara is a careful artist. She listens and plans carefully, takes her time, and works to fill her paper in an interesting way. Kara's artwork shows careful geometric and, and organic shapes, arranged nicely with several line details to finish her awesome architectural collage. Great work, Kara. Congratulations. Our next art teacher and student are from Church Hill Elementary School, and they are here with their principal, Jackie Wilhelm. So please come on down. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Aaron. Congratulations. This is for you. Aaron is a fourth grader at Church Hill Elementary School, and he's nothing short of amazing. This is only his second year at Churchill Elementary School, but he has already made a treasured mark upon our school. Aaron has had an interesting life, even though he's so young, and he has, his journey to the Eastern Shores was very interesting as well. He was born in Indonesia, where his parents were teaching college abroad. abroad. He is the oldest of three. He has a brother, Asher, and his sister, Lydia, and I do get to the privilege of teaching Lydia and Will Asher, too. Aaron is one busy person. He spends much of his time reading, working on his art, learning new things, and playing basketball. And while we've been talking together over the past year or so, I've found that we have quite a bit in common. He is currently reading the Percy Jackson series, and he's also very tech savvy. This is where we have a lot in common. He enjoys doing research online, Googling nonfiction websites, and likes to find lists and rankings of different cool pieces of information. Aaron does have collections at home of stamps and coins, but he admitted his collections will never ever be complete at all. So I've had the privilege of teaching Aaron for two years. He has an amazing sense of work ethic. He is also very daring and willing to think outside of the box when doing his art. He is a natural born problem solver. He is always curious to learn new things, to try new media, and to take chances in his art. His products continuously demonstrate superior craftsmanship and creativity. Aaron has, ha Aaron has had his own art in the Eastern Shore Student Art ex exhibit, exhibit this year, as well as in the First Lady's Gallery in Annapolis, which are huge accomplishments. In his current piece, Aaron used a, tessellate, a tessellating object to create this um, filling of the page of the paper. Then he select his colors. His color choice was phenomenal. Not only that, but when you go into the hallway, if you look at his application, it was done in such a technical way. He um, changed the use of his tool to create lightness and darkness. Phenomenal. When I looked at it, I just, my jaw dropped. But I wasn't surprised at the same time. I am disappointed in him very, very much so because he's leaving Churchill to go to the middle school. So. <laughs> I guess that's okay, but I am so confident in you that you're going to change the world in a positive and colorful way. I'm looking forward to hearing your next accomplishments and what you do. I'm proud of you. Our next student artist, teacher, and principal are from Graysonville Elementary School. Please come down. Unfortunately, our student artist is not here tonight, but we will hear all about him. So I'm going to present this to you. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I wish it was for me, actually. But, yeah. This is a picture done by a fourth grader in my school. Um, and her name is Murphy, 
and this picture is called Rainbow Starfish. The main idea and the goal of this project was exemplified throughout uh, Murphy's artwork. As a class, I envisioned the concept of this picture by creating a starfish that displayed the colors of the rainbow. I wanted something that represented uh, beach and the summer. Um, so while discussing the colors of the rainbow, we also revisited the use of the color wheel and the color of families associated with it. As a class, we drew one large starfish and the starfish resembled puzzle pieces that are almost organic shapes displayed throughout the legs. Um, several of the artworks throughout fourth grade, um, some of them, hers are, her shapes are very technical, they're very close, um, and some of the other ones in the other classes were very large, so the variety was exceptional throughout fourth grade, but her stood out to me uh, the most. So after discussing several watercolor painting techniques, the students painted each shape of the color of the rainbow. The pattern went in order while many shapes have two colors displayed in each area, and then they had to just repeat it. At times, the students were able to reverse the order on the legs that are climbing onto the paper from the outside. Looking at Murphy's painting, you can tell she used precise details, time, patient, and thought while using excellent painting skills. She controlled the paints very well, which made her picture vi very visually appealing. The ending results show that Murphy used higher level thinking skills, which increased her visual awareness and enhanced her creative capabilities. Murphy always asks a lot of questions in class to gain a better understanding of each project. Um, if you saw Murphy, Murphy's very sh uh, small, and her, I feel like her pictures represent her. Um, she always draws very, very tiny. So in this picture, I thought that it just, it just symbolized her very much so. Um, but it also represented her big personality because she's very larger than life. Through learning to use patience and time in this painting, Murphy also has shown she is very capable and ready to conquer any task given to her in school. Um, while doing her best in art, Murphy also enjoys playing soccer and gardening with her mom and cooking as well. She also has two brothers and one sister, and her animals are two dogs and one lizard. So that's a little bit Murphy. <laughs> so, thanks. The next school is represented by Jackie Wheeler. That is Kennard Elementary School. And that's not our picture. Oh. That face. <laughs> Did it go through? Sometimes I can't find things. Okay. Um, um, so, Jesse Lewis, please come on up. Jesse Lewis is a fifth grader at Kennard Elementary School. She is 10 years old and comes from a family of six. Her favorite classes are science, gym, and art. She didn't tell me that. I threw that in there. <laughs> I asked Jessie what she wanted to be when she grows up, and she said she'd like to be a fourth grade classroom teacher. Um, one of the fifth grade art projects this year was to draw a duck, goose, or swan for the Maryland Federal Junior Duck Stamp Competition. Now, for all you hunters out there, you know before you can go hunting for a duck or a goose, you have to buy a duck stamp. And those are usually designed by adults. So this is the junior version. Um, I asked, Je I say, uh, wait a minute, where am I? Okay. The duck Jessie chose was the gadwall. This is a gadwall right here. And I asked her why she chose that, and she said, because she was the last person to pick a duck, and that's all it was left. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were a few other ones left. Um, um, okay. Uh, but out of the remaining birds, she found the gadwall to be pretty and interesting. Jessie worked very hard on her design, and she even stayed after school twice in order to get, to get it finished in time for the competition. But unfortunately, time ran out due to the competition's change of date. It used to be in March, and they moved it all the way up to February. So, um, we, ran, so we lost a whole month of time. Um, it, um, so for all the students whose artwork didn't get finished in time for the competition, we, Kennard Elementary School, had its own duck stamp competition. I chose uh, 20 of the best pictures, and everybody in school, everybody that works at my school, everybody got the vote. And guess who won? <laughs> um, okay. All right. 
and Jesse's beautiful rendition of the Gadwall, Gadwall duck won first place. So even though the Gadwall is not the prettiest bird in the flock, I found that Jesse's dedication and hard work made it the people's choice. Congratulations. your before picture. <laughs> oh, this, this is, we always do it before and after, so it's what it looks oh like, how they draw before they have real artistic instruction. And this is wow. her before picture, right here, <laughs> compared to what she drew. Wow. <laughs> One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Great Good job. job. <laughs> So you're, sorry. You're good. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Right, there you go. Oh, technology. <laughs> okay. Our next um, school and our teacher and artist are from Kent Island Elementary School. So please come down. Hi, I'm Mrs. Sage. And this is Lila. And as you can see, Lila's artwork turned out amazing. Her planning and preparation was just above what I even expected for a second grader. So it's such a delight for me to honor her today. Uh, Lila Obenshane is a second grade student at Ken Island Elementary School. She is eight years old and lives with her family in Chester. She has one brother, Jonathan, and a dog named Maisie. Her hobbies include art, crafts, soccer, and horseback riding. Her mom has said that at times she's found recycling misting and turned into treasures. So um, Lila also really loves animals. Her favorite animal is a dog, and her favorite subject in school is specials. And art is her favorite special. Lila enjoys drawing her ideas in art class. Her warm and cool sunset is made with watercolor paint, Sharpie marker, and a little bit of white crayon on paper. I asked Lila what her favorite part of the project was, and she said seeing her completed art. She really likes how the black Sharpie drawing and watercolors look together. Lila likes her warm color pattern on the sun rays and blue color pattern on the rays, or on the waves. She also thought the project would look really good with a giant, cool wave. Great job. I'm very proud of Lila's hard work in art class. It really shows the in the outstanding project she created. She's an extremely thoughtful, dedicated, and creative student. I look forward to seeing the amazing art she creates in the future, and good luck at Bayside next year. Our next art teacher, principal, and student artists are all from Mattapique Elementary School. Please come on up. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Shanta Matsui. He is a fifth grader at Mattapique Elementary in Mr. Cherry's class. At home, Shanta likes to play soccer and sometimes draw, he said. In school, his favorite subject is science, but he also likes art. All of the teachers who work with Shanta at this school agree that he is a leader for all of his peers and an exceptional student in all areas. 
For this project, fifth grade students learned about jazz musician Louis Armstrong, and we looked at pictures of various instruments that he played. Students then chose one of these instruments to draw on a large piece of paper with a Sharpie outline. We then explored with oil pastel blending to add color, and for the final step, students used tempera paint to paint around their instrument. When it came time to choose their instrument, Shenta chose the bass guitar without any hesitation and made a few practice drawings before beginning his final. Shenta made his drawing fit the space of the large paper and gave attention to the proportion of the instrument. When it came time to add color, he chose a beautiful blend of warm color pastels and very carefully covered every inch of his bass guitar. Shenta then chose a cool color for his background to contrast his warm colors, and he painted quite a few layers of the blue tempera in order to make the color bold and dark. In every art project that Shenta has made, and I've had the pleasure of working with him for third, fourth, and now fifth grade, he takes time and puts forth his greatest effort. I'm always very proud of him and will miss him very much next year when he's in middle school. Good job, Shenta. Our next student art artist, principal, and art teacher are from Sudlersville Elementary. This is Alex, an amazing person I just got to meet this year. Alex is a fourth grader at Sadlersville Elementary School. He has been part of our school for only um, since second grade. And like I said, this is my first year teaching him, so that makes me really sad, but I'm also super happy I got to meet this extraordinary person. Alex was born in Atlanta and moved to the Eastern Shore when he was in second grade. He has five brothers and sisters and enjoys playing games with his brother. He has so many talents. This is one of the most fun interviews I've ever had. He likes to dance, sing, and play sports. He likes to play football, basketball, and soccer. And he enjoys sketching and doodling and adding super tiny details to his amazing art. Alex has a super bold plan for the future. He plans to play for the New York Giants as a mid-linebacker, be an artist, which I was very happy to hear, and also an engineer. He's going to be very busy, but he is talented. He could nail all of those. I'm so proud of you. Um, one of the coolest things is that Alex takes pride in being an honest and trustworthy friend. He is always kind and respectful in art class to me, to those around him, and he's always respectful of his space and materials. He goes out of his way to do the, his best. He asks for clarifications, um, talks about his unique ideas, and focuses time and energy on his amazing art. It is really exciting when a student comes up and says, did you think of this or could I try this? And I'm like, well, you thought of it and you need to try it. And he does an amazing. Alex's art, The Northern Lights, was created through the use of pastel along with collage techniques. We discuss color selection and the color families analogous to choose which colors to use to create the beautiful lights. He created depth as well through the use of the pastel in his mountain ranges. Just a totally well done piece of artwork start to finish. I am very proud of Alex and I can't wait to hear about the football and the engineering and all of that. And like I said, I'm so glad I got to teach you for this one year. Wish it was more. So 
that was all of our elementary artists, and now we're going to have middle school artists. So alphabetically speaking, our next school would be Centerville Middle School. So could the principal, art teacher, and student artists please come up at this time? Well, this uh, is Kelsey. Ro this is Kelsey Rogers. Um, a little bit about her. Um, she's sixth grade. Her favorite color is blue. Uh, she loves to eat crabs and has four other siblings. Um, her favorite subject in school is art. And uh, she likes to do cartoons. She likes to do a lot of realistic art. And she's uh, liking pop art right now. Um, her hobbies include drawing and reading. And she likes to hang out with her friends and family and also looking at Instagram. Um, the project that um, Kelsey did is called the Dictionary Narrative Art, and um, it's always fun working with this, um, this project. Um, we first look at how uh, modern artists, such as Pablo Picasso and Marcel Duchamp, they stepped away from traditional ways of creating narrative type um, art. And um, these artists, like Duchamp, used found objects, ready-mades, uh, bicycle wheels, things like that. And then Picasso used a lot of collage, um, collage techniques. So, um, so um, with, um, with that in mind, we looked at New York artist uh, Robert Rauschenberg and how he was influenced by these artists. And then he would use two and three dimensional objects and put all these materials together and come up with a nice project. Um, so uh, the students were giving a dictionary page and they had to choose a word from that. And from that word had to create some, um, some idea of a narrative. And um, in doing so, these modern artists would make the viewer more um, more engaged and cause them to actually kind of make up their own stories. So what I loved about um, Kelsey's work is um, she had an ex uh, ex um, excellent example of composition. I loved how she, uh, the term was feather. I like how she uh, had the three different um, juxtapositions of the actual feather, the drawn feather, and different images that she found of the feather. Um, and also, this, the balance of the composition, the way she arranged everything, the paint that she used, um, the drawing techniques, just everything came together and made an excellent composition. Um, and that's why I chose it. Um, she's a very dedicated uh, student in the art room, enthusiastically tackles any kind of art project without any question, um, and is extremely talented. Uh, being in sixth grade, I look forward to working with you for two, two more years. Um, congratulations, great job. Next school that there is Mattapique Middle School. We have our art teacher and our art student. So please come on up. And and representing the administration, we have the assistant principal as well. Congratulations. What an honor it is to be here with Allison. Wow. <laughs> Talk about a creative soul. Um, she is a seventh grader at Mattapique Middle, and she is so creative, she could draw all day long if we let her, but we won't let her. Um, all of her work is very detailed, and she takes home assignments or stays in during lunch. She gives up her lunches to make sure it's just right. How many students do you know would do that? Wow, <laughs> okay, that's all I have to say. She has a positive attitude, and no creative challenge is too large for this young lady. Her scratch board is based on the traditional designs of the Maori people of New Zealand. Um, the main designs that we chose were the kuru, the chevron, and the spiral. And the main colors of the artwork is um, are red, black, and white. 
um, it's important to share the world with our students and no better way to do it than through art, the culture of another people. Allison lives in Stevensville with her mother, father, and sister, one dog, and three gerbils. She's active in the school band, plays softball, and loves to read and ride her bike. Besides art, one of her favorite subjects is science. I'm sure art's in there again, too. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to point out, not only does she spend so much time on her work, but the actual um, working with a scratch board. Was it easy for everyone in the class? No. No. Scratch board is very difficult. And it's not like you go back and erase your mistakes. You have to be very, very meticulous. And this young lady is amazing with, with that particular medium. So I'm very, very proud of her. Congratulations. and artist from Sudlersville Middle School will now be presenting their work. Hey, first I'd like to say uh, Aaron and Alex, it'll be good to have you guys on the team next year. Always looking for good artists. This is uh, one of our current teammates though, uh, Shelby Shadle, and Miss Bachmiller couldn't be here tonight. Her son got sick right at the last minute. She was in school today and so she shot some stuff for me to say. One of the things a little weird, you might have to explain it, I don't know. <laughs> Ms. Bachmiller uh, has had the pleasure of being Shelby's teacher for several years, and she gets stronger and stronger as the years go by. She says, your creativity is not only expressed in the manner of your dress, but also in your artwork. I'm not much on fashion, but I'm sure there's some sort of creativity expressed in your dress. Uh, Shelby's favorite sports are softball, field hockey. She loves hanging out with friends, enjoys fishing and crabbing, but let's talk about the artwork for a minute. The focus of this painting, uh, Ms. Bachmiller tells us was to explore animal inhabitants of the Serengeti and students were able to make decisions on the choice of the animal, the terrain, the time of day, and the color family to be used. Shelby liked the project and she was able to draw attention to the plight of elephants and the fact that humans should not be killing them for resources. So a uh, artist activist, I would say. We're very proud, Shelby, that it is your artwork that's representing Southernsville Middle School and the Superintendent's Art Gallery. Thanks. Will you join us for to present Stevensville Middle School's student art and both the artist and the teacher are not able to be here tonight. It's all yours, Mr. Thank you very much. Appreciate that very much. Um, Ms. Schrader and Logan both aren't here tonight because we have a big community event tonight. Um, it's called our Spring Fling. Um, Logan is working, volunteering, and Ms. Schrader has an art exhibit and auction that she's doing, so I'm coming up to represent all of them for the evening, and then I'm going to run back down and join them in the fun. So, um, Logan is an artist in every sense of the word. Not only is he an outstanding visual arts student, but he is actively involved in choir, dance, and theater. In fact, this summer, Logan will be playing the lead role in St. John's College production of High School Musical in Annapolis. Uh, for this assignment, Logan was asked to copy a photograph of himself using a wide range of value to create three-dimensional form and to incorporate a background that gives us a sense of who he is as a person. You can see that the shading technique that he used here um, is very well done, highly realistic, and demonstrates Logan's attitude toward the arts in general. Work hard, have fun. When I asked him to, and this is Ms. Schrader, I didn't ask him, Ms. Schrader. When I asked him to explain, I will what I want in the background, his response was it means that he doesn't let people's opinions or thoughts of him stop him from being who he is. He doesn't let stereotypes define him or hold him back. Anyone that knows Logan, and I can absolutely agree with this 100%, knows that he lives true to this. He is his own person. Um, he also told Ms. Schrader that the lion represents strength and no fear. Uh, she adds that the lion, in his case, also represents leadership because Logan is a natural born leader. 
Uh, she's super proud, so am I, super proud of Logan, all the work that he's done in the art room this year and in, in the past. Uh, he has tons of talent in many different fields, so we know we'll, we'll hear from him in the future. Um, as she said, uh, our school and her classroom are just a better place having him be part of it. So, thank you. Okay, now we are to our high school. And we have Kent Island High School represented. Please on, come on up. And is the Kent Island artist here as well? Awesome. This is Nina Kellenhauser's painting. Um, Nina is an 11th grader at Kent Island. Her favorite classes are art and science. Um, <laughs> but that's important because she plans to go to college to either be a wildlife veterinarian or a nurse. So I guess the science is going to come in handy. She's going to need that. Uh, she plays varsity volleyball and she works as a cashier at Cracker Barrel. Uh, this is her interpretation of an oil painting assignment that I gave them where they had to focus on achieving texture, the illusion of form, and a hyper-zoomed composition of an animal. So that's a lot of things they had to cram into a little canvas, but she did it. Uh, the composition had to include principles of emphasis and movement, and due to the subject matter, it would certainly require the texture and the value. Students were able to experiment with oil paint um, using a palette knife, impasto brushwork, thick or thin uh, layering processes, and I think Nina did a little bit of all of that. Uh, she selected the predator bird because it's for your dad, so I wanted to thank him for letting us borrow it for six, excuse me, six months. Um, Nina said her favorite part of the class was getting to experiment with new media and new techniques to further her knowledge and artistic capabilities. However, she did not like doing the portraits too much, just the bird, that was the best part. Nina is a very talented young lady, but this painting is definitely a testament to her efforts. I don't have the little before picture like you had, but that was a really good idea. Um, she worked so hard, lots and lots of hours, and she took the painting home, which traveling with oil paint back and forth is not an easy task. That's a, a big investment. And so I can't imagine how many hours at your dining room <laughs> table were spent painting for this assignment. Um, she openly accepts critique. She invites it. She's up at my desk asking questions all the time. And even when I was giving criticism that could have been a little harsh, she totally accepted it and applied it. And I mean, the result is just stunning. The eyes are mesmerizing. You're going to have to see it in person because the PowerPoint doesn't do it justice. Your work really evolved over the semester because it showed so much maturity. You were able to refine and hold back, and I am just so proud of your work. You are really an artist, so if that vet thing doesn't work out, <laughs> you should really pursue art school. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And the great thing is this picture sits right across from Mr. Paluski's office, so it's constantly staring at him <laughs> through the open door. Yeah. Now, the last artist and teacher and principal are from Queen Anne's County High School, but they're all ill, it, so there must be something <coughs> going around. So I am gonna read the statement. Do you want me to present it to you, Julia? <laughs> Please, <laughs> because I would never get one on my own, I can tell you. Okay, Allie Harris, as you can see her artwork, it's a ceramic tile. Allie Harris is a junior at Queen Anne's County High School. In addition to her academic studies, she is a member on the varsity volleyball, basketball, and softball teams. If you had asked Allie before taking this class if she thought she was artistic, she would have told you no. In fact, she has been putting off taking an art class in high school because of that very reason. Her last class was in sixth grade, and she had to be convinced to enroll in Ceramics I. It quickly became evident, however, that that was not the truth. For from her first thumbnail sketches of her design, it was clear she possessed natural compositional understanding. 
Her creativity and willingness to challenge herself with complex compositions has set her apart from the average student. Her work ethic and commitment to excellence has allowed her to consistently create quality pieces. In this ceramic tile, Allie chose to use asymmetrical balance. She combined the techniques of piercing negative space and engraving to create the positive space image of the peacock. She conscientiously chose to have the subject both overlap and protrude from the border. Her color choices and glazing technique further enhance the stunningness of the piece. She modeled and attached a small flower to the surface of the tile to create another layer of visual interest. Her choices come together to create a beautiful and unified ceramic piece. So, thank you all. At this time, we are going to end our presentations in here. One more round of applause for all of these wonderful artists. <laughs> At this time, we'll adjourn out to the lobby where Mr. Strait will take um, like short 30 second interviews from each of the student artists. So if you stand near your painting, Mr. Strait and Ms. Harrison will come by and you'll have a little interview so that that can be shown on Channel 7. Okay? Thank you so much for coming. It was a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.